Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. My name is Mkholi Sinjube and we continue our political talk uh, with the road to 2023. Uh, we have again Ngabuto Mapena, the General Secretary of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We did an interview last week. We are carrying on from that interview with the part two uh, of the interview. Mr. Mapena, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much and uh, greetings to everyone who's watching this channel. By the way, they call me Comrade. Thank you. Right. Uh, last time when we spoke, we got to a point where you explained the triple C, you explained the ZANU PF and the allegations that both uh, are puppets of the West. Today, I want us to venture into something else, especially about the ZCP. Is it contesting 2023 elections? Well, well, the Zimbabwe Communist Party uh, has not made a decision to contest the 2023 elections. Uh, the resolution at the party congress in 2019 was that uh, we should hold a congress, uh, we had resolved on holding a special congress uh, to decide on our attitude to the elections in 2023. Uh, as you would know, we have been affected by COVID. Uh, we have not been able to hold Congress, but we are hoping that uh, uh, before elections we are indeed going to hold the Zimbabwe Communist Party Congress, where a decision is going to be taken on uh, how uh, we should participate in the elections. But uh, what we did in, in, 20, <coughs> in 2018 was that uh, we did support individual candidates that uh, were contesting. So it might mean that uh, uh, we might support individual candidates uh, that might be uh, contesting, but also the Zimbabwe Communist Party allows for dual membership. Uh, so we might see some of our comrades who are members of the Zimbabwe Communist Party who belong to other political formations contesting as candidates, as councillors, as members of parliament. But uh, the decision is yet to be taken by the party. So do you have members who are across board, like in ZANU-PF and in C at the same time? We do have members who are former ZANU-PF members. Uh, uh, the last time I checked as General sec Secretary, uh, they have not renewed their membership in ZANU-PF as far as, 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 <coughs> as we are told by them. Uh, we do have them. We do have members uh, who are actively involved in Triple C. We do have members who are involved in ZAPU. Uh, of late, we have been joined by comrades who are actively involved in Mtwaka's Republic Party. Uh, so we do have members across uh, some political parties. But I must point out that uh, the issue of dual membership it's an issue that is under discussion in the party. There are some comrades who feel that uh, dual membership uh, uh, affects the growth of the Zimbabwe Communist Party in that uh, they are arguing others saying uh, the loyalty of a comrade gets divided because you have to be loyal to the Zimbabwe Communist Party, you have to be loyal uh, to the other political party that you belong to. But what is key, uh, which has been raised, which is factual, is the question of ideology because we are a Marxist Leninist uh, political formation and uh, these other political formations, they are not Marxist Leninist, they are mass movements, but with a different ideology from us. But it's an ongoing discussion uh, that we are having inside the party to say, uh, should we scrap dual membership or should we enter into some kind of alliance uh, with the, a mass movement uh, uh, which uh, this communist manifesto does speak to that the communists do not establish or create separate parties from those of the proletariat or the workers and the question that we are confronted with is is there a party in Zimbabwe mass movement that uh, is a representative of the working class in Zimbabwe and has that question been answered? It's a debate that is happening inside the party. And uh, uh, as we continue to debate, we hope that when we get to Congress, uh, it is at that point that uh, we'll be able to find a solution to this question. But as Ngawuto Mabena sitting here, do you think there is a party out there in Zimbabwe which represents the interests fully of the workers? 
I will not respond as in Mabuto and Nicholas Mabena <clears throat> because uh, 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 I speak uh, uh, on behalf of the party uh, that, that I lead. Uh, uh, we, we have said, we have characterized the others, like in the last interview, uh, that they are advancing a neoliberal agenda. Uh, 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 they do not represent the interests of the working class. But, but there, is, there is this history uh, that we should not ignore. The history which says uh, the movement for democratic change was born out of a consultation uh, uh, after the introduction of the Economic Structure Adjustment Program in 1991. Civil society and uh, the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions began to take a different path. From that, from that of ZANPF, which then led to the convention, the National Working People's Convention, which resolved that uh, you needed to establish a, a workers' political mass movement. Uh, at the time, the discussion was that you establish it along the lines of the Labour Party. Uh, uh, but, but, but of course, even if you look into the document, uh, of the National Working People's Convention. Some comrades then felt that uh, if you say National Working People's Convention, <coughs> it excludes uh, other, others, your business people and others who are not necessarily workers. Uh, so the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions then played a key role in establishing the, Zimbabwe, uh, the movement for democratic change. So there is this, this history that you should not ignore. And uh, many workers uh, still believe that uh, Triple C, which is now Triple C, represents that history, uh, even though it has undergone uh, some form of reformation or transformation, but they think, believe, still believe that uh, it is their political movement. So it's a reality that uh, we are confronted with. Okay. Um, and then there is the grapevine there. It says that the ZCP is mooting getting into 2023. Uh, you've said that you haven't decided on that, but is it true that there are some consultations taking place for the ZCP or representatives of the ZCP to contest 2023? Like, like, like I said, that uh, uh, <coughs> members of the Zimbabwe Communist Party belong to other political formations. We have members of, of the Zimbabwe Communist Party who are in civil society. Uh, who work in mass organizations because uh, our principle as a party is that the communists must work in mass organizations. Uh, so as comrades work in these mass organizations, they get approached to say, we want you to stand as a council candidate uh, in this work. Uh, we want you to stand as a member of parliament. So uh, this is why we are saying, uh, and we encourage comrades to avail themselves. Uh, uh, and uh, the party uh, which we are saying will be discussing at Congress is to say how do we then support because the standing resolution that, that we took in 2018 was that we support the comrades that have been approached to stand <coughs> for public office whether as members of parliament or as councillors. Okay, and then there is this pending issue it has taken a new dimension now with the whole of Africa let me say uh, joining that fight is the issue of sanctions. Where does the ZCP stand in as far as sanctions are concerned? We are opposed to sanctions. We we are on record say calling for the lifting of the sanctions because uh, sanctions uh, do not serve any purpose. We remain opposed to them. But we have always made it clear that uh, they are not the cause of economic collapse. They are not the main cause. Uh, yes, they might contribute, but they are not the main cause. And we have defined the main cause in our various documents that uh, it is corruption, it is the neoliberal policies, it is nepotism uh, uh, that uh, <coughs> has caused the <coughs> collapse of our economy in Zimbabwe. But sanctions must go. Uh, we, we don't uh, compromise on that. Sanctions must go. And why do you say they must go? Because you've said that they are not the main cause. Uh, People are saying that the main cause is actually ZANU-PF, which is also what you have spoken about, corruption, there is looting, but we seem to see uh, a lot of amplification of the ZANU-PF voice that sanctions must go. So do you think that joining the sanctions must go crusade would in a way pass you to ZANU-PF? We defined our strategy in Zimbabwe because we are not just like any other political formation that is established to <clears throat> remove ZANU-PF from power, 
established for any other reasons because we had to uh, through the master learning institutes of analysis we had to say what is the problem in Zimbabwe what is the nature of our strike in, strike in Zimbabwe and came to the conclusion that uh, ours is a strike against imperialism ours is a strike against what we today call the looting class uh, therefore these sanctions are imposed by imperialist forces we cannot as communists stand on one corner with imperialists even if locally we do not agree with the zanu pf but on the question of sanctions uh, because ours is a strike against imperialism we cannot uh, say maintain the sanctions then you remove them when there is a new government no no that, that's that's not how we operate so i say on a question of principle because the sanctions are used as a tool by imperialist forces and therefore we are opposed on the imposition of the sanctions uh, by the united states and her friends on the political leadership in zimbabwe yes we understand Yes, as, as, as a, we're having this discussion with some comrades on the 25th of October, a day which Sadak has a, put as a day to carry out various activities to ensure that sanctions are removed. Uh, comrades were then raising the issue of local sanctions imposed by ZANU-PF to the people of Zimbabwe. But our view is this, that as communists, we reject sanctions imposed by the United States of America and the Air France or by any other. Uh, equally, we are opposed to the looting of our resources by the political elite in Zimbabwe. That's the nature of our strategy. Okay. And then there is this global realignment taking place. There is China on the other side with Russia. Let me say the BRICS. Then there is uh, the West on one side. And I think the war in Ukraine has already kicked up some dust into the air. Where does the ZCP stand here? We know that you are friends with the Chinese, but in this global realignment, are you therefore also standing with them and the Russians? What, what we're having in Ukraine is that Ukraine is a battleground. It's an imperialist war happening in Eastern Europe. There's this misconception that Russia from Norway invaded Ukraine. That's not factual. What happened is the people of Donetsk region uh, decided through a democratic referendum that uh, they don't want to be part of Ukraine. There was a genocide that was ongoing in that region. President Putin and the Russia, by the way, President Putin is not a communist. He's not a member of the communist party of Russia. Is uh, 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 is uh, a nationalist. Uh, the communist party of Russia is in the is the opposite opposition party in Russia. It is represented in the Duma. So the, we are not supporting President uh, Putin on the basis that is a communist. No, we are supporting him on a, a, a on principle that uh, NATO must be dismantled. It is NATO that he is causing suffering across the globe. And by the way. The target is not a Russia. It is unfortunate that uh, the war is uh, 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 being fought by Russia, Russia fighting NATO in that, uh, uh, in that part of the world in Eastern Europe. And for anyone to even think that uh, uh, Russians are fighting against Ukraine, it is not true. It is a, a, an imperialist war fought by Russia where Ukraine uh, is at the background, but the target is China because China has surpassed the, the United States of America uh, economically, technologically, and uh, the United States want to be number one. So, how do you then weaken China? First, you must identify her friends, weaken her friends, and then get to China. So, we understand clearly. So we are opposed to NATO. NATO must be dismantled. We know what NATO has done globally in Libya and, and elsewhere across the globe. This is why we are calling for the dismantlement of NATO as a military force. But now there is another uh, argument that if NATO doesn't extend or if the U.S. doesn't extend its interest outside the U.S., the Chinese will take over. And there are allegations that the Chinese, some of them are real, of course, that the Chinese, especially Chinese businessmen operating in Africa, are uh, exploiting workers, they are exploiting resources of Africa, they're not even banking in Africa, they're not investing much in Africa except to prop up uh, these 
dictatorships. We have them in Zimbabwe. They are trying to come into South Africa. We have them in Zambia. The current president wants to kick them out. We have them in Ethiopia. And there are always allegations following Chinese wherever they go. And do you think, therefore, they need to be checkmated by the U.S. as it is doing? But, but the United States, uh, <coughs> who gave the United States to be the policeman of the world? <laughs> that, that has, that's what we are opposed to. Because you can't have a country imposing itself to all of us as the policeman of the world. But on the question of the Chinese business people, we are very much concerned as the Zimbabwe Communist Party by the attitude of the Chinese business people in Zimbabwe. Uh, and elsewhere in the continent, we have held meetings with the Communist Party of China raising these issues to say we cannot abandon our own workers. If we are to build true friendship as the Zimbabwe Communist Party with the Communist Party of China, it must be built on, true, on, on truth because we must be truthful. We are the organ of the working class. So there is no way that we can abandon the workers in Zimbabwe in favor of having a relationship with the communist part of China. So we have raised these issues. In our latest theoretical anger, we publish <coughs> the message that we send to the communist part of China. We publish uh, the messages that he, firstly, the ambassador of China to Zimbabwe raised when he was confronted. He said the trade unions in Zimbabwe are making things up. But after our intervention, having a discussion with the Communist Party of China, the, the ambassador in Zimbabwe was instructed to say, please investigate these allegations. Because we cannot afford a situation where Chinese business people abuse our workers. But the second point that, that we must mention, uh, our government, they go on a business transaction with China to borrow money. Yes. If you go, if you come to me, you borrow money, you must pay it back. That, that is a business principle. Why, why is it wrong? Uh, uh, for China to ask the people to pay back the money that they will have borrowed to them. Because our governments go and they borrow money to China, and because China is led by the Communist Party, therefore the expectation is that China should just forget about the money that was borrowed by our governments. And China does not interfere on how you then spend the money. The agreement is, we borrow you 100 million US dollars, you must pay it with interest. It's a business transaction. And if you fail to pay, pay the money, then it's certainly something must happen. If, if I go to a bank, uh, I apply for, for a loan, uh, if I can't pay, there must be something that must be done to recover, uh, uh, to settle the debt. So that is the problem. And, and, and the mistake is that people think that China came to Africa carrying a gun, like the imperialists. They never did. China came purely to trade. But because we are led by corrupt leaders, who then parcel out a connive with the Chinese business people to loot our resources. This is why in Zimbabwe, we are saying as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we have no faith in the, in the triple C, uh, because it is, neo, it, it, is, it is neoliberal, it fronts the interests of the West. We have no faith in ZANU-PF because ZANU-PF does not, it, it is corrupt, does not in, protect the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. And by conniving with Chinese business people to loot our resources, we need a responsible government that represents the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. We must trade with China, we must do business with anyone in the world, but we must put the interests of the people of Zimbabwe, the interests of our nation first. Yeah, you, you raise an issue that the ambassador of China to Zimbabwe has asked to investigate. When do you expect these results of the investigations to come up? And who are they consulting, who are they reporting these investigations to? Are they going to publish a document or something? When we don't know how they are carrying out, the ambassador is carrying out the investigation, but uh, what we have said as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we always talk to our comrades in the trade unions to say there are allegations against the Chinese employers. Let's have these allegations documented because when we engage the Communist Party of China, we are not engaging on hearsay. 
we need to provide evidence to say you have a mine or there's a mine owned by Chinese business people in, in Michigan, for, for example, this is how they are treating workers. And by the way, it is the duty of the Zimbabwean government to ensure that the labor laws of Zimbabwe are followed to the land. It is not the duty of any foreign government. It is the duty of the Zimbabwean government. This is where the Zimbabwean government has failed. Because we need to enforce our labor laws. It doesn't matter whether you're an American investor, a Chinese investor, a British investor, a local investor. You must respect the rights of workers as entrenched in our labor laws. But besides the workers and the exploitation of the workers, there are also people who are being displaced. This is a human rights issue. Do you think, don't you think that China also has a responsibility to make sure that its citizens outside of China respect the people where they operate in? Because at the end of the day, it's the image of China that gets uh, hurt at the end of the day. The, 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 this is what we are raising with the Communist Party of China, to say, if, if we are to build socialism uh, 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 guided by the thoughts of President Xi Jinping, uh, of China or socialism, Chinese characteristics as they are building in China. Equally, we have a duty as the Zimbabwe Communist Party and the Zimbabweans to build socialism with the Zimbabwean characteristics. We must, therefore, as I said earlier on, build our friendship based on truth and based on protecting our own nationals, protecting our own sovereignty as the people of Zimbabwe. It is wrong for the Chinese to displace any communities. But again, they are not doing that on their own. It is clear that the relationship between the Communist Party of China and that of ZANU-PF is not built on truth. Uh, ZANU-PF uh, only goes there uh, uh, for the purposes of benefiting economically by displacing the people, by not protecting workers because workers are being donated to uh, the opposition in Zimbabwe. As the Zimbabwe Communist Party we are saying, if we are to build socialism in Zimbabwe, it must be built under our own conditions, not under the Chinese conditions in Zimbabwe, because conditions are different. And a part of building the, uh, socialism in Zimbabwe, it means that we must raise the class consciousness of the workers and uh, the peasants, because at the end, uh, it is the workers that uh, drive production. Therefore, it is key as the party that we raise these issues with the Communist Party of China so that action is taken. Right. And as we draw to a close, what's your view on the U.S. Africa summit that is upcoming? Well, 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 well uh, uh, the United States <coughs> thinks that, as you raised earlier on, that uh, China is taking over in Africa, is pushing it out. It is also trying to cement its, its relationship uh, with uh, Africa. Uh, uh, of course, it is not based on honesty and the truth. It is based on also plundering the resources. Uh, uh, of Africa, we saw <coughs> what is happening, uh, we are seeing what is happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In fact, the sanctions that you are talking of, about have their roots in the Democratic Republic of Congo because the United States, under the leadership of former President Bill Clinton, used Rwanda and uh, Uganda as proxies to attack the Democratic Republic of Congo because the United States and reference wanted to exploit the minerals in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And Mugabe uh, in 1998 then sent the, the army to defend uh, Kabila Senior, the late Kabila Senior. And that's where you have your roots uh, of the sanction. So the issue of human rights uh, and so on uh, is just to, to camouflage everybody, but the roots are in the exploitation of resources in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, this relationship, uh, which they are now trying to rebuild uh, through this summit, is specifically meant to that. It's not only the United States. We have Japan, Africa Summit, Russia, Africa Summit, EU, Africa Summit, Britain, Africa Summit. We must build our own economy. Yes, we cannot build it in isolation. We need to work 
or trade with others. We need to do business with others, but we must protect our own economic interests as Africans. Well, thank you. Uh, the program is wrote to 2023, and we are focusing on the Zimbabwean elections. You've already characterized both the ZANU PF and Triple C as imperialist agents or puppets. But these are the main parties that are going to be challenging for 2023. So what is your message to the Zimbabwean voter as we go into these elections with this scenario playing out? Well, well, well as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we are very clear that uh, uh, it is <coughs> our right as Zimbabweans to participate in the electoral process. Uh, we call on every Zimbabwean to register to vote. Um, uh, I'm always asked uh, uh, to say, Comrade McBenna, you say people should register to vote. Who will they vote for? Uh, 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 I've always said, no, we will make an announcement uh, when the time comes to say, <coughs> what, what do we vote for? Uh, 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 because we are analyzing uh, what we call the Jeremy Cronin uh, uh, theory, you know, the former Deputy General Secretary of the South African Communist Party. When we are talking of building the Zimbabwe Communist Party, his theory uh, is that uh, <clears throat> you build at the same time a mass movement, which which uh, we have not been able to do. Uh, we have been focused on building the Zimbabwe Communist Party and uh, pushed uh, to the ban, back ban on the issue of a mass movement. Uh, but uh, it's an issue that uh, uh, is being discussed within the party. It's been discussed. In, uh, by others to say, let's have a, a communist standing, uh, <clears throat> whether in constituencies, whether in the presidency, whether uh, in councillors, what is not yet uh, 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 agreed at the moment, which is an ongoing discussion, is whether uh, we stand under the banner of the Zimbabwe Communist Party or under a coalition which is going to be led by the Zimbabwe Communist Party. So there are ongoing discussions that are happening, not only inside the Zimbabwe Communist Party, but these are discussions that are also being raised by comrades in society who are not necessarily members of the Zimbabwe Communist Party, even not communists uh, after all. And when do you expect these announcements to be made? At exactly what point? <coughs> You see, there are no timelines, but, but, but like I'm, I'm, I'm saying that uh, uh, <clears throat> we want to uh, at least have resolved this by, say, end of February, uh, uh, so, so that uh, we are clear on where we stand, we communicate our message in time, but uh, at the moment, yes, indeed, there are consultations uh, on whether <coughs> the Zimbabwe Communist Party should provide a presidential candidate. Uh, there are consultations on whether there must be uh, members of uh, parliament, uh, candidates as for members of parliament, the councillors under the banner of the Communist Party. Uh, the other view is that uh, let's have a broader a, a coalition because uh, a, a, a people are now realizing that uh, you need. Uh, uh, what men would call an alternative to ZANU-PF and the Triple C to say uh, uh, how do we then approach the elections when we know that uh, the two political formations uh, will not uh, resolve the crisis that we find ourselves in as a country. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We hope to have you again here whenever your time permits and whenever there's a topical issue to talk about. But thank you very much uh, for creating this show. The, the pleasure is mine and uh, we do really appreciate for us to participate uh, in this channel and uh, we have been monitoring the views that were expressed by uh, the viewers in the last uh, video that was recorded. We appreciate and uh, we keep trying our level best to improve and also to work in communities. Well, there you are viewers and subscribers. Your views are very much uh, important to not only helping out our politicians and helping out our guests, but also helping this channel out because what we want to do is to represent your own views, is to provide the voices that you want to hear, is to give the ears that you want to, to, to send your messages to. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it.